We're seeing a new glimpse into the raids of hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs' Los Angeles home. The mother of Diddy's son recently released this footage to her Instagram page as she slammed federal agents, accusing them of using militarized force against her son. Misa Hilton, the mother of Diddy's son Justin Combs, posted the sped up surveillance video of last Monday's raids as agents with Homeland Security descended upon Diddy's reported $40 million LA home. In the first few seconds of the clip, you can see armored tanks arrive outside the home. Then agents with their guns drawn open one of the cars parked in the driveway. The video then highlights one particular agent who notices the home's security camera. He points the camera toward the ground. Once inside the home, federal agents can be seen using a drone. Then the video shows Diddy's son Christian with his hands in the air, pressed against the wall, then handcuffed. Diddy's son Justin then appears with his hands on his head. The agents then appear to take him down a hallway. The release clip ends with what appears to be another man who is dragged out of the home and on the driveway by agents. Photos of the aftermath show Diddy's sons Christian and Justin on the lawn of the L.A. home while agents seemingly continued their search. Justin Combs' mom released a statement along with the video slamming the federal agents for the way they handled the raid. The statement reads, quote, The overzealous and overtly militarized force used against my sons Justin and Christian is deplorable. If these were the sons of a non-black celebrity, they would have not been handled with the same aggression. The attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. Enough is enough. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun pointed at the back of his head while he was handcuffed? How many times have we seen young unarmed black men not make it out of these types of situations alive? My son's attorney, Jeffrey Lichtman, is investigating the excessive use of force, which was unnecessary and certainly not required by the search warrant. We will fight for justice utilizing every imaginable resource. I'm not with the propaganda. Justin Combs' mom, Misa Hilton, isn't the only one criticizing the raids for excessive use of force. Diddy's friend and Grammy Award-winning producer Stephen Jordan, better known as Stevie J, told a reporter with Fox 5 New York he was at Diddy's home when the feds raided the mansion. Stevie J referred to the incident as traumatizing. In the interview, he said he'd never had 50 laser dots pointed toward his shirt, and he felt like agents were going to kill someone. Stevie J, Justin, and Christian Combs were not arrested or charged following the raids. And Diddy was not near his L.A. mansion at the time of the raid. Instead, he was reportedly attempting to board his private plane to fly to the Bahamas for spring break with his twin daughters. Authorities did make one arrest. When Diddy's alleged drug supplier, 25-year-old Brendan Paul, was attempting to board onto Diddy's plane, but police arrested the former Syracuse basketball player at a Miami airport. Paul was referred to as an alleged drug mule for Diddy in Rodney Jones's $30 million civil suit, where Jones accused the music mogul of sexual misconduct, grooming, as well as sex and drug trafficking. Paul was arrested and charged with possession of suspected cocaine and marijuana candy, and later released after posting a $2,500 bail. A lawyer for Paul later released a statement saying, quote, We do not plan on trying this case in the media. All issues will be dealt with in court. In light of last week's federal raids, which are reportedly related to the federal sex trafficking probe, Diddy's camp has criticized federal agents and their search, referring to it as a witch hunt based on meritless accusations. As the agents are seen with their weapons in hand and as Diddy's sons are in cuffs, was the raid over the top and overzealous? As retired FBI agent Colin Schmidt explains, it's all standard procedure. Well, it comes right back down to the, the their concern about the uh, the, the extent of the threat. You know, this is a huge property. Um, there was a history of firearms with uh, uh, Sean Diddy and his uh, entourage. Um, the the allegations are very, very serious. And um, there's always generally some, some sort of criminal or violent uh, behavior uh, surrounding those kind of allegations. And in my experience, when you do use uh, a significant amount of force, you are minimizing the ability of somebody else to push back, so to speak, and potentially turn this into a, a, a violent encounter. We broke the video down with Schmidt. He explains weapons were drawn and the security video was turned down to the ground, so agents had the element of surprise. Well, the first thing as far as them having the guns out, I mean, they have to be ready to, to, to address a threat, and that's, a, that's standard operating procedure. And as far as the security camera, once again, that's for the security or the safety of the, the, the operators of the SWAT team that's going in there. Um, they don't know if somebody's monitoring that camera, so they want to turn that down to the ground so the person on the inside doesn't know exactly what they're doing so they can continue to have the element of surprise. 
As for why drones were used, Schmidt says it's to gather intelligence and monitor any potential threats. While the raids have drawn criticism from Diddy's camp over the treatment of his sons and employees, Schmidt says they were treated just the same as everyone else. You hit the nail on the head. They're treating it like any other case. Um, I've had cases where we had to make entry into very large estates or large uh, uh, places. You know, you can kind of go back to the way the, the FBI did the Trump raid. It was the same kind of cir circumstances, a huge property. There's, they don't know how many people are inside that property. Uh, they are, have, uh, the, their job is to get in, get it under control and get everybody out and to do it in the safest manner. So to, to be specific, I don't think there was any other way to do this just based upon the fact that the property was so big. I'm, I'm sure they were terrified. Um, I'm sure they were just completely overwhelmed. Um, you know, wish there was some other way of doing this certain structures that are just single, we would do a surround and call out and be able to bring everybody out of the house so there we, we wouldn't have to enter without and interact with people. But a surround and call out was just not feasible in this situation because of this, just simply back to the, the size and the complexity of the structure. Diddy's been embroiled in sexual misconduct civil suits since his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura filed a federal lawsuit in November accusing her ex-boyfriend of physical and sexual abuse rape and forcing her to have sex with male sex workers. The suit was settled quickly and swiftly, just a day after it was filed in federal court. However, in a new report, we're learning Cassie has been cooperating with federal authorities amid the sex trafficking probe. But since Cassie's suit, Diddy is facing four other sexual misconduct lawsuits, including Rodney Jones's suit, as well as civil suits accusing the rapper and producer of battery, sexual assault, gang rape, and having sex with minors. The fallout from the legal saga seems to be felt throughout the entire entertainment industry, with many famous faces seemingly distancing themselves from Diddy. Several famous names have also been dragged into the mix. Prince Harry was named in Jones's suit not as a defendant or as someone accused of wrongdoing, but named as someone Diddy would use to allegedly draw guests to his infamous parties. City Girls rapper Young Miami and 50 Cent's ex Daphne Joy were named as sex workers in Jones's suit. Young Miami, whose real name is Carisha Brownlee, has yet to publicly comment on the sex worker allegations. Meanwhile, Daphne Joy publicly responded via Instagram, calling the accusations completely false. In a statement, she wrote, quote, I'm deeply hurt by the lies in the Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I'm a sex worker is 100 percent false and character assassination. I'm retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. Diddy's record label, Universal Music Group CEO, is firing back at claims he and the label aided and abetted Diddy in his alleged sexual abuse, calling the accusations offensively false. Lawyers for UMG and their CEO say Jones's inclusion of the record label is an attempt to fit a square peg in a round hole. The prestigious fashion event of the year, the Met Gala, where Diddy has been a frequent attendant, has reportedly rescinded their invite to the exclusive event. Talk shows are seemingly scrubbing mentions of the music producer. Live with Kelly and Mark re-aired old interviews this week, but during Tuesday's re-airing of an episode from June of 2023, Kelly Ripa told guest Mary J. Blige she wanted an invitation to Diddy's yacht. According to Page Six, the show tried to cover their tracks by pulling the clip off YouTube. In another report, actor Ashton Kutcher reportedly fears being subpoenaed and drawn into the investigation of his longtime friend. But there are some who are publicly supporting Diddy during the ongoing legal saga. Diddy's friend and collaborator, Stevie J, who was in Diddy's Miami home when the feds raided the mansion, defended his longtime friend, saying Diddy would never break the law and seemingly referred to the sex trafficking probe as a crucifixion of a black legend. Even posting this clip onto Instagram with the caption, this is what a real Diddy party looks like. Celebrities who have seemingly remained quiet about the Diddy legal saga, such as Dr. Dre, Kylie Jenner, Kim and Khloe Kardashian, Jay-Z and Pharrell, Naomi Campbell, all appear in the video. Um, and as far as the people that are around him, I'm sure they're they're speaking with their lawyers and they're trying to find out and they're speaking with their their you know their reputational consultants to make sure uh, that they can minimize the damage to their their selves because they did attend these parties. Not that they did anything wrong, but unfortunately, human nature is guilt by association. So uh, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, fallout from this, um, and I think that uh, a lot of people are going to take a step back. Uh, when they do get invited to parties in, in Hollywood and decide whether it's worth going there in terms of their reputation or they just need to stay home and watch Netflix. Diddy appeared all smiles in a video posted to Instagram after the raids. And the hip-hop mogul's demeanor has appeared to be calm, cool, and collected despite the ongoing legal drama. 
He broke his social media silence amid the ongoing lawsuits to wish his followers a happy Easter next to a photo of his youngest daughter. But is Diddy's upbeat demeanor just a public persona mask? As Schmidt explains, it's unclear what could be going through the hip hop mogul's mind. Well, he's a career entertainer and, and you know, and an actor, you know, in the sense and, and obviously a, a recording artist. So he's going to put on the best face he can, you know, and, and basically make sure his investors and the people around him uh, see that he's not phased because if he starts looking uh, concerned or panicked, and then, of course, it, it'll dovetail into other people kind of leaving his camp and uh, not supporting him. So I think this is a, a, a way of him to kind of continue to garner support amongst the, his community of, of friends and family and, and collaborators. Uh, but obviously, he's got a lot of things to think about right now. So could we see the search warrant be unsealed anytime soon? Schmidt says it may be months before we know exactly what agents discovered. I think the search warrant will stay sealed until um, either this is resolved. It may never be unsealed um, because they don't want to reveal the people that were uh, that, that that assisted or they talked to uh, the cooperators. Um, I think eventually it will be it'll come out, but it may not come out for a year. You know, so um, I'm sure the media organizations are going to start pushing to get it. But uh, the process now is that it'll stay sealed until there, there's at least an indictment. And at that point, then discovery starts. They turn it over to the defense and then the defense will have an option. If they want to uh, turn it over to the, the media, they can they can potentially do that unless a judge tells them they can't. And as far as Justin Combs' mother posting the clip of the race to her social media page, Schmidt says it's likely to control the narrative. But we should remember there are victims who are still looking for justice. I'm not surprised she posted it. She has to, they're, they're, you know, they, they have to control the narrative um, and, uh, and and do their best to control the narrative. And, and frankly, that's her right if she has that data uh, that to, to, to do what with it, what, what she wants. I don't think it helped the situation. I don't think it helped her son or her uh, or Sean Diddy. I think it may have just, you're, you're, you still have human beings you're dealing with on both sides of the, the table. And um, basically kind of amping this up, I don't think that, solves anything for anybody. Um, also, um, it's a matter of is the public going to be sympathetic to uh, a, a billionaire and, you know, uh, him, his problems and his issues. Um, this isn't something that happened, you know, uh, in an unfortunate instance in, uh, in a, a lower socioeconomic area of Los Angeles or New York or, or Cleveland. Um, this is in Hollywood uh, with a, you know, a $50 million mansion with electric cars out front and uh, uh, dealing with a billionaire. And then they had another one in, in Miami. I don't think the, the, the American people or the public are like having a whole lot of sympathy for anybody right now. I think ultimately everybody wants to just kind of see this play out and then kind of see what the, the outcomes are because they are saying that there's victims on the other side of this. So I understand this is an uncomfortable situation for the people that were there. Nobody was injured, which was, which was very good. But if in case if this does turn out to be true, there's a lot of victims on the other side that uh, need to be you know, recognized and uh, sympathetic to. Diddy has remained relatively quiet this week after last week's raids. However, after the raids, Diddy's lawyer issued a statement saying that he's innocent. The statement says in part, there was a gross overuse of military level force. There's no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. There's no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.